what is the Niners biggest concern heading into the playoffs? And why is it Jake Moody? Just kidding. You <laughs> answer. Well, it was Jake Moody. Um, but I mean, you know, it could be Jake Moody, but I'm going to mm-hmm. say, even though I'm known as the biggest Brock Purdy, uh, supporter probably, uh, around, I'm going to say it's Brock Purdy interceptions. You know, Brock Purdy had nine interceptions in, in the four losses that he had this year. He's the opposite of check it down. He's mm-hmm. always looking to attack. And to me, he just needs to be reminded. You know, it's funny. Alex Smith needed to be reminded not to take the check down. Brock Purdy needs to be reminded to take the check down. And um, to me, it's like if, if you give me a patient Brock Purdy that doesn't turn it over with his playmaking ability and the rest of the surrounding cast, I think the Niners are going to go to the Super Bowl and have a great chance to win it. I really do. So, But my biggest concern is that he, you know, t- is impatient, uh, gets a little a- antsy, wants to make things happen, takes too many chances, and gets into a three or four turnover type game. That's We've That would be my biggest that. concern. Yeah. We've seen him do that in a couple games, like the Baltimore game, the interception, the first one on the first drive in the end zone. And then it, w- it was an interception, but against Jacksonville coming out the bye week first drive again he rolls left throws back to Ayuk, and it's like no 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 yes what an incredible catch by Ayuk! but had to acknowledge it was a really reckless decision and then he did it again and it cost him so yeah like there are moments where he tries to do too much and it's also like he's an anticipatory thrower and there are certain defenses that might be able to anticipate where he's going to throw almost blindly because you have to throw before the quarterback, before the wide receiver makes his break. Ravens did it. I don't know how many teams can do it. I don't know if any team in the NFC can do it, but yeah, it seems like certain teams have had real success against Brock, including the Niners defense, right? Like in training camp, Brock threw a bunch of picks. He was going against a great defense, a great defense, some other great defenses out there and they've had success against Brock too. You know, it's funny. We we've talked about Brock's turnovers in training camp in a general sense, but we've never really talked about Brock's training camp interceptions in a particular sense, but you and I were there every day Mm -hmm. and now we can talk about it in a particular sense. What's the common denominator of all of this late over the middle tipped passes, Mm -hmm. tip passes that are late over the middle. So I I would just say to Brock, the one area that I've seen failings in your game is when you're late over the middle. Don't be late over the middle. Or or also just be very circumspect about your releasing the ball. When it is late over the middle, man, you better have a real good accounting of the defenders. And you know, you better you better not take chances, but even think about it, Grant, close your eyes and think about those training camp interceptions. So many of them were tip balls Mm -hmm. and late over the middle with not a lot on it. But it's also like it's the Niners defense and the Niners don't have any weaknesses in their back seven. They can cover, they can cover zone. They can cover man to man. And what makes Brock so good for this offense is the combination of the five eligible receivers and Kyle Shanahan means that most of the time the opposing defense can't cover everyone and someone's going to be open. And Brock can find them instantly. Like, not like Sam is like looking, I don't know where he's freaking looking. Brock can find the dude instantly, but when you finally go up against a defense like the Niners, Cleveland, Baltimore, that doesn't have any weaknesses at linebacker or safety at corner and they can really match up, you can't just bank on someone being open every play. Like, Brock has to actually, it's hard. I mean, he has to play the position. And all of a sudden, he's throwing anticipatory throws to people who aren't open, to windows that aren't open. And it's a bit of a catastrophe. It's a bit of a meltdown. We've seen some meltdowns from him. But there aren't that many teams that are built like that. But the ones that also, are in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, also, I would say, look at the difference on his designed movement when they design him to roll out. I think his, his, his uh, success is way greater than when he gets flushed. Now, we just saw in the commander game him get flushed, move around, and then buy time. But he did throw it to an open spot where there was no other defender that could have been peeking from the other side. Yeah. So that was the difference. But um, it seems like when he does get flushed and he moves around, 
And, it, you know, it, he, it sometimes can be a late over the middle type situation. And you just got to be really, really careful. I would just say to him and, and, you know, make plays, go out there and feel like you need to make a play, but don't, you got a, you got a really good defense and you got a punter that can, that can pin the other team inside the 20 with pretty reg, pretty good regularity. So, you know, especially early in games, you know, you never have to worry about late in games. He's going to try to make a play, but early in games, if uh, it's not there, throw it away, punt, play defense, go to the next play. Keith Murphy, the unbeaten says our biggest concern is being down late. <laughs> How about being up late? I mean, <laughs> Kyle was up 10 against the Chiefs. He was up 25 against the Patriots. What about Kyle? To me, I'm not really concerned about Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's a really good quarterback. I know he's had some bad games, but like a lot of his defenders say, a lot of quarterbacks have had bad games. Yeah, there's a reckless streak in him, I guess, but Kyle has a very long history. We know exactly what his pattern is, and he showed it against the Ravens. In the most pressurized moments, the biggest games of the year, he makes uncharacteristic decisions. He loses the identity of his offensive system. He chokes or has. I'm not saying he will this year, but to me, he's the concern. Have you grown? Because you could always point the finger at Jimmy Garoppolo and say it's his fault. It's his fault. You can't do that with Brock unless he throws three picks in a game. So I want to know what Kyle can do with a lead, with a deficit. What's he going to do in a big game? Yeah, I mean, this is Kyle's a great coach, but yeah. this is this is the issue. And here are the numbers. The 49ers are 0-39 when trailing by eight or more points in the fourth. The 49ers are 1-33 when trailing by more than 10 points in the second half. Ooh. And the 49ers are 4-35 when trailing by three points or more entering the fourth quarter. So, I just, you don't expect that from an offensive genius. I know the odds are stacked against you, but you would think someone as gifted as him would find an edge, just a, a small one in those situations, but he hasn't. It's a weird situation. Um, okay. Against Kansas city, they ran the ball, you know, and were maybe a little too conservative against a really explosive offense mm -hmm. that, you know, eventually ran them over down the stretch. Um, and then in other games, they haven't run the ball. Abandoned, or you could argue the Niners abandoned the run in that Super Bowl. I mean, they had Mostert and Debo clicking and put the game in Jimmy's hands like, hey, buddy, you close it out for us. Like, what? Here would be my biggest complaint with Kyle is, and I, you know, and I, it was something I voiced to him at the, um, in the aftermath of the Super Bowl. Um, when the Niners played the Rams in the NFC title game and it got down to the fourth quarter, it was Stafford to Cup. Stafford to cup, Stafford to cup. The Niners have three really, really special players. It's Ayuk, it's Debo, and it's CMC. Those guys have to touch the ball a lot in the biggest games. I'll even say Kittle. Playoffs. You could go to Kittle too. He's pretty good. Kittle's good. But as far as you got three real dynamic playmakers, and you got to get the ball to your dynamic playmakers. Yeah. It ain't use check. Sorry. I it's love not. JJ too. JJ, JJ's, you know, really dependable a third down guy, but I'm just saying like, you got to get the ball. I mean, Debo had two touches in the second half against the chiefs in the super bowl. He How was many the, touches literally, he have in the fourth quarter against the Rams in this NFC championship. Like Kyle, yeah. you can't make these mistakes. They got, got to get, get out of the ball. way. Well, Kyle, and, see, and, here's what Kyle does. And he can be when manipulated. When he gets scared, not scared, when he when he gets in these pressured moments, he's like, okay, they th expect me to go to my best player, so I'm going to not do that. Like, no, who doesn't matter? Go to your best player. Do whatever they expect you're going to You have to go down swinging Fighting. with your best player. Yeah. Come on. I mean, look at yesterday. They needed a big play in the fourth quarter. Now, granted, yesterday was a different kind of a game, right? So you had no Debo, and you had no Ayuk, and you had no McCaffrey. But in the bit, you know, what happened? Um, Chris Conley dropped a key pass. Ray Ray McLeod, McLeod dropped a key pass. I mean, if that had been a playoff game, that's a disaster. You have Ayuk, you have Debo, and and you can you can manufacture touches to 
to Debo. And to me, I got I to gotta see Debo touch the ball a lot, especially in the biggest games. I mean, in the biggest games, I feel like Debo has has a way to elevate that even other guys don't. I would I would list him as the number one weapon in the biggest games. And I, I got to manufacture some touches to Debo, um, you know, with the money on the table. Yeah. Fish and Chip says Kyle needing help play calling biggest concern. Well, I'm with you on that. Uh, I don't know about play calling. Matthew Sanders says pin teams deep and get safeties and re- is better than relying on Moody's leg. Wow. We're just Niner fans are don't want to kick field goals anymore. Okay. <laughs> Which is scary, you run. know, I mean, that's a that's not necessarily a great spot to be in where you don't trust your field goal guy. But whatever test they can manufacture for Moody and practice, they need to do it. Fish and Ships says run abandonment, a Kyle trait that's perplexing. Yeah. Considering it's a run first system. Okay. 